Hey, this is Isara with UX in Motion. Welcome to another exciting beginner tutorial on how to animate UI parallax in After Effects. I'm going to show you a really quick and simple method of uh, of creating this. Uh, it's really plug and play. There's a lot of different kinds of parallax out there, many different sort of styles and flavors. This is sort of the simplest way of creating it. Um, and we're going to get started with that right now. So I'm going to show you the file I'm working with very quickly. I flattened a lot of layers for this tutorial, so I'm just dealing with the uh, the top navigation bar, this statistic layer here, this this data overlay, and this uh, background layer. You may have, you know, you may want to animate all these things independently and this independently, in which case your file would look a lot different and have a lot more layers. In this lesson, um, I didn't actually design these. This company called UI8 did a great job of designing a whole bunch of UI. Uh, it's like a toolkit. Um, here's some of the screens they've uh, created. This one's uh, activity screens. They've created like hundreds of these screens, really high quality design files. It just saves me a lot of time rather than, you know, designing a lesson. I could be, uh, the time I spent designing, I'm now spending just finding a screen and creating a cool tutorial for you guys. And if, if I was designing a project right now, I'd probably be using these guys' screens. So uh, if you want to pick this up, you can just click the link here or below and just grab it. It's really, really cool. Just want to share that with you. Um, let's jam on this guy now. So I'm just going to open this up. I'm just going to create a new blank file here. And I'm going to go ahead and import uh, command I, my parallax. I call this one flat because I like to create an, an animation layer. Flatten that down. I'm going to bring it in as composition retain layer sizes. Okay. Double click that. And by the way, if 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 you're already confused, you're like, dude, I don't know what just happened. Go to my website, uxemotion.net, put in your email, and I'll send you a free uh, after, after Effects Fast Start video for designers, for UI designers and UX designers who've never animated. It's it's amazing video. It's like 35 minutes long. You watch that. At the end of that, you'll be able to fully animate your design projects in After Effects. It's literally the best video out there online that I'm aware of. So go ahead and do that. Otherwise, if you're hanging out with me, I'm gonna assume you know a little bit about what you're doing. So here we go. So at the basic level, parallax is just the, the effect, the name of the effect that we give when two or more layers are moving at different rates. And it, and it visually creates this experience of depth. It's really, really cool. Kind of like, you know, there's a, probably a whole theory about the brain and why and how that works. I don't really know, but it's really cool. There's a lot of ways to do it. I'm going to create a few more other tutorials uh, on this technique, one using like 3D, like actual 3D to create uh, parallax. And that's a whole different interesting way of working. But for now, we're just going to do this. So um, I'll notice right away that our canvas size is actually too long and we want to be working in standard size. So we're, you're, we're going to make this 1920. Hit the advanced tab and have it crop from the top rather than from anywhere else. Double check that you're working at 60 frames a second, which is what I recommend you work with when you're doing UI animation. So it's smooth and delightful. Now I'm just going to go ahead and start animating this guy. And as if you've already watched previous videos, you know that I like to work with the Fibonacci numbers as a starting point. I just find them useful and the animation in motion tends to look really good at 60 frames a second when you use these numbers as the distance between the keyframes and also the curving, the, uh, the velocity numbers as well. Because this tutorial is more focusing on the uh, like setup and less on the animation per se, I'm probably not going to do a whole lot of easing, but um, I will show you the setup because it's pretty simple and pretty cool. So I'm going to jump into 13 frames and I'm going to just drop in some keyframes here. Before I do that, I know that I want to be possibly animating this BG, this background layer here a little bit more. So I'm going to move the anchor point. If you hit Y on the keyboard, you can just move your anchor point up uh, about to the middle here. If snapping isn't turned on, I recommend you do so. And now I'm going to select these layers. I'm just going to command click. So I select multiple layers, hit option P to put down multiple position properties on these layers. I'm going to jump over 89 frames. Well, let's do 55. What was that? I got lost. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. 55 frames. And I'm just going to add another position property here. Jump over 13, 10, one, two, three. 
N, close the work area, and now I've sort of just blocked out. This is how I like to work sometimes, just by blocking out where the motion's gonna be happening. And now I'm also going to, well, let's, just, let's start with these and then we'll, we'll detail this up a bit. So at the basic level, I'm gonna go to these keyframes and we're just going to slide this statistic up. So you can click and drag the number, you can click and drag in here in your canvas, we're just gonna slide it up, you can zoom in, hit period on, on the keyboard, and then the uh, keyboard arrow keys, however you want, you can click and drag these guys, all good in the hood, that's just what we're doing. Okay, cool. Now, I'm going to animate this background and text layer. So, I just go back to the endpoint here, and I know that my overlay is just gonna slide up a bit more than my background, so I just moved it up, let's do four, and my background up two, I'm holding down the shift key, and I'm just arrowing it up a little bit. And now, we can see, I mean, this is just really, really simple, right? This, ho this hopefully is either really exciting for you, or you're like, okay, yeah, I get that. Right, we're just moving these layers at different rates and they land in different um, in different places now, moving at different rates. And that's all we're doing. So if, for instance, I wanted the background to move uh, a lot slower, I could back that off one and it'd be much more of a like subtle effect here. And same with the type too. If I backed this off, so I, I moved it up uh, four little notches. If I moved it up two instead of four, you can see it's, much more of a uh, like like subtle effect. Now, there's a lot of ways I've seen people detail these uh, parallax exper experiences, and you may want to do that, or you may be like totally cool. You're like, dude, I got my value, thanks, peace out. And you can totally do that, that's cool. Here's a couple little tricks that I think are low-hanging fruit that are awesome. So if you hit Option T on your overlay, and then hit uh, K to go to your next keyframe, Option T again, and you've, if, if you double click this keyframe and make it like 60%, the text starts to fade out a little bit. I've seen people do that, that looks pretty cool. Here's one that I really like though. On the background layer, you can kind of detail this a little bit. If you hit option S, we're gonna scale it. Go to your end keyframe, option S again. Let's jump to our starting keyframe and we're gonna make this a little bit bigger. We're gonna go 110. You can see it just jumped there. But what's going to happen now when it's going, uh, when it's when this window is cl is closing, is this background layer is going to scale very subtly here. It looks really cool. I love it. Right? There's a little bit of like a uh, secondary motion. Really provides a ton of depth, more so than if you didn't do that. So that's just a great technique that I am fond of. So there you go. That's how to create very very simple. Uh, parallax setup in your After Effects file. I'm not going to go into the velocity curves and timing here because this is more of a, a uh, like setup challenge than it is an animation challenge. Once you have this set up, you can animate you know whatever you want to do. But really, the trick is getting this dialed in with the timing right more than anything else. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. That was a quick one, uh, beginner, but very very important way of learning and thinking about layering and parallax. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.